this weekend who's an employee um, and you know I'm, I'm, I'm merging him into this right I'm teaching him I'm taking him by the hand and I'm, I'm, I'm teaching him we're actually gonna roll out 40 lead gen properties this month okay and so I'm trying to get him out of his job and I'm just like listen I'm gonna take you by the hand and do this and we we're starting to talk about um, like benefits, like, you know, cause he works for a big corporation and, and we, we actually start got this argument about, well, you know, but when you work for a corporation, you can get benefits. And I know it's different in Canada, right? You guys have, I think you have all free, free healthcare to a certain extent. Yeah. To a certain extent. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, down here, you know, the, the general way it works is you get a, you get a corporate job and they, they, they chip in or they, they mess with your health benefits. And so a lot of people, what they do is they get brainwashed to believe that, if you work for a corporate job, you know that, hey, the family's going to be taken care of because you have all your benefits taken care of. And I said, listen, bro, I go, you realize they're just taking that out of the paycheck. They're just holding money back to pay exactly. for your benefits for you. But in your mind, you think that's security. And so he's like, well, yeah, but most people aren't like you, Dan. They don't have a skill set that they can go out there and create an income. And I'm like, that doesn't mean the skill sets don't exist, right? It's just that you have to open people's eyes up to there's a different way than, the, than living than just simply going and punching the clock for a corporation for 20, 30 years and getting your gold watch. But generally from so young, we've been brainwashed that, Hey, you need security. Don't take risks, you know, play it simple and, and, uh, and safe. And unfortunately that's what keeps people, um, in prison in my opinion, in, pr in the prison and the confines of this, these huge corporate you know, structures. But then when guys like you and I, who basically learn, a, in my opinion, it's not that hard of a skill set to pick up. Once you kind of get through it, I'm teaching my 10 year old. I mean, let, let's- Yeah, no, I've seen it, I've seen it. I mean, it's, I mean, once you work on it, you always learn, we always learn. Yeah. We always learn new stuff. We always get informed on what's, I mean, we, it's part of, I mean, developing ourselves, developing our business, or so no matter what you do, I hope if you if you do something and you plan on doing it like full time, of course you're gonna learn more and learn this and learn that. But at the end of the day, it's not that hard. There's a process in place right now that we follow, and then of course there's been some new stuff and and I mean probably differences maybe in some how we do development or whatever. But I mean the main line is there. Yeah, the it's core. Follow. Yeah, the core is there, and that's yeah. that what counts, man. Yeah. So yeah, sure. And just to say what you were. What you were saying about that corporate thing and stuff, I, 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 I tend to see. I think I see people. They, 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 they like to stay. It, it, it puts them in confidence to stay in their own, their own mind, their own fear. What at the end? I mean, what are you doing or you don't? What really like stops you from doing like new stuff? Like you're presented this opportunity or whatever. I mean, what stops you is really the fear you have in your mind. Yeah, the it's of the new, of the new, of the new, the uncertainty. Yeah, exactly. That's all it is. It's is, is that true? Is is that going to work for me? It's all in your mind. It's all in our, and it was in my mind when I started. I mean, it was in my mind. I didn't really know. I didn't, I wasn't sure. There was no guarantee. There was no like, hey, no matter what you do, it's going to work out. I mean, we have to put time. We have, I mean, it is like that. As an entrepreneur, it is like that. So, I mean, it's a choice we make, but it works. And you have I, to put the work into, but it works. Yeah, for sure. I mean, listen, I think a big, a big power, the, the power of the group that we've created, we have that private Facebook group. That's great. Yeah. You know, so like, like the process, like I said, I could train to my 10 year old daughter. She's literally building lead gen properties at 10 years old. So we know that the process isn't like, you could be the most tech out of your mind, no good. Yeah. Uh, or, or, or doesn't matter. We can, we can get anyone through the process, even a 10 year old uh, girl who's a fifth grader. Okay. So that's not an issue. What generally, like you were just saying, the issues come when you get into something, you start learning it and then fear sets in or uncertainty sets in. And then, you know, no one's there to lift you up and keep pushing you. And that's the, honestly, that's the reason I do these case studies. Because how inspiring is it to hear from someone that started in this just two years ago, or 2016, so two and a half years ago, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, you got 42 different, you know, pieces of real estate on the web now that are producing on average between 700 to a thousand dollars a month. It sounds like that's yeah. a that's a sizable monthly income that you've created from learning this skill set, sticking to it. But you've only been doing this for two and a half years. Now, talk to me about when you owned a car wash. Talk to me about the investment that that was in this car wash. Talk to me about the income that came from this car wash. Cause I think That's, people 
don't understand what these brick and mortar type businesses spend to make what they make. And I think it's uh, so important. Yeah, no, that's a great point. I mean, uh, that's a long time ago for me, but still I was 18 just to put people in context. We started at that concept out of a uh, um, golf clubs parking lot. So I was, I had nothing to do with having a job at that, uh, let's say uh, fruit and vegetable, like working in the grocery store, stuff like that. So I was playing golf and I've seen all these like luxury cars coming in. So I say, why, why don't I offer them to wash their cars while they come in here and spend money anyway? So yeah. Like owning a car wash, it would, the, the money was like, it was not that bad, but I, I'll promise you one thing. It's a lot more to invest in a car wash and the structure and the equipment and the staff and the learning and the time and the time consuming on, and then just wash car by car, then just building something that is there to stay. And at the end of the day, I won't lie to you. I mean, car wash is great, but people got a lot of options. I mean, what we're building here is something that, no matter where, no matter where he's from, no matter what country, no matter what language, that local business owner, what does he want? What does he want more than anything? More customers. He want, he want more customers. He wants that phone to ring. So um, for me, I mean, not only on the financial side, like the investment and the time and, and the fun we have building that business, the fun that we have compared to, I mean, time spending washing cars, or it could be anything else in washing cars, but I mean, the dollar works pretty well in our business here, Dan, and you know that. I mean, you own real estate, right? I do, I do own some too. Um, not a lot right now, but I've, I'm just comparing numbers. I bought some like condos in my area like 10 years ago. Yep. And and the numbers that I'm renting like for each door, I mean, it it does not even compare. So, like when we talk ROI, it doesn't compare to what we do here, what we build, how much money we put in and time. Versus what it gets us back. It, it's right. not even comparable. So for me, it means a lot.